The rainforest of Peru represents the largest area of untouched jungle left in the world. Here, in the headwaters of the Amazon, vast stretches of forest are unbroken by road or rail. The only way to get through them is by river or on foot. Peru's Madre de Dios state, near the Bolivian border, is home to at least three tribes of Indians who've not yet had contact with Western civilization. They live in these forests as they have done for thousands of years, fishing and foraging for their food. But all that may be about to change. Development is on its way. Petroleum giant Mobil is looking for oil in the area using a system of seismic testing. Taking off from makeshift airstrips, helicopters venture deep into the jungle. Mobil's search involves cutting hundreds of kilometers of routes through the forest in the very areas where the isolated tribes have been spotted. There are signs that Mobil's presence in the Rio Piedras region is already having an effect. My brother saw them. There were 32 of them. Naked they were. Men and women. 32 of them. They came from Rio Piedras. I suppose they were upset because of the noise of the helicopters. It's an age-old story. When Indians do meet Westerners for the first time, they often contract diseases for which they have no immunity. One such meeting took place in the forest near the town of Sipawa in 1984. At that time, shell were prospecting for oil in the region, cutting open the forest using the same techniques Mobile is using now. One group, the Yoras, came into contact with Westerners. A flu epidemic broke out. Survivors remember trying to get to town as the sickness hit. They all died. My uncle and cousins died as they were walking along. Their eyes started to hurt. They started to cough. They got sick and died right there in the forest. Some were small children, no bigger than that. They put all the bodies in a big hole, and everyone was wailing and crying, screaming and crying. These photos were taken just after the group reached town. One year on, nearly half the 300 Yora Indians had died, most of them from simple colds and whooping cough. <laughs> Nowadays in Sipawa, Indians are given regular vaccinations. Doctors in the area do what they can, but often they're helpless. They die of flu, colds and other illnesses. Illnesses that are so routine it makes me angry. It's shocking, they just don't have the necessary immunity. Shell denies they were responsible for the epidemic which killed half the Yura tribe. But anthropologists say the oil companies must be held accountable. The contact was made by loggers, but the access to the Yura area was gained through trails cut by the seismic team exploring for shell in 1984. The representatives of Mobile, um, they're using basically the same system of seismic exploration and the problems that it generates would be comparable. Mobile is going ahead despite the risks. They've set up base at this airstrip on the Madre de Dios River. From here, 400 employees are ferried north to sub-bases in Block 77, into territory where tribes are in voluntary isolation. Mobile say they're doing all they can, but they admit the possibility of fatal epidemics. I can assure you that we're trying to prevent those incidents in every way possible. And like you say, we can't absolutely guarantee that it won't happen, but our medical screening process is what we think is the best time to go through at this point before they go into the jungle. Line cutting has been going on for several months. Conservationists say Mobile's work is bound to be damaging. We have noticed the presence of some uh, Indian groups around here, and they might be coming from Rio Los Amigos, and that might be in relation to the mobile activities, but one cannot say it for sure. People like Heinrich Helberg think the oil work cannot be stopped. 
while they disagree with it, they feel they're more useful working with Mobile than against them. A, a total protest could be harmful uh, in comparison to the monitoring the activities. And this is the option we have taken, to monitor the activities instead of opposing completely. Diamante is a community of mainly Yine Indians. It's situated just upriver from Mobile's airstrip. In fact, the airstrip is on land belonging to Diamante. Residents are meeting out of concern. They say that Mobile has not asked permission to use the airstrip, nor has Mobile given them any payment for its use. It goes against an international treaty which demands that oil companies compensate local communities whose lands they use. Antonio is the town head. He said he asked Mobile in May for funding for their handicrafts industry, but he's had no response yet. Bueno, más antes cuando vinieron Mobile, eh, hemos tenido conversaciones con ellos. Well, a eh, while ago, when Mobile visited us, y we had conversations que with them. Ellos me face to face. Que iban a apoyarme, and they told me that they were going to support me and also that they were going to be able to offer work to the young men of the community so that they could work for the company. But till now, we have not had further conversations, and neither have they provided the funds they promised. The effects of trying to adapt to modernization are clear in Diamante. In a society where money is a new commodity, the corrosive effects of Western culture can now be seen. Viéndolo yo, en más antes no había mucha cerveza. As I see, no había before tomada. there wasn't very much beer. Entonces, there manera, wasn't much drinking. Están llegando now, traders are starting to arrive here. Shopkeepers who are bringing beer and alcohol. So the youths look for money tomar. to be able to drink. But development has also brought benefits to communities like Diamante. Besides a school and a highly valued health post, <laughs> Diamante has been awarded government funds to build its own drinking water tank. There's a recognition that change is not only inevitable, in some ways it's desirable. Most Indians still feed themselves with food provided by the forest, but there's an increasing demand for money to buy such things as soap, clothes and machetes. And for that, paid work is needed. Locals hope that Mobile will provide it. But in Bokomanu, the non-Indian community near the Mobile airstrip, only three people have jobs with the oil company. Most think the pay is too low. Eight sol is 50 a day. Helpers of all sorts, they get 8.50 and that's all they get. From here, very few people go over there to work. They don't want to because they earn so little, they prefer to work at the village cooperative. It pays them better. I, I would like there to be work around here, but that they pay decently because there are people in this area who have given up their studies because of a lack of funds. It's good that companies come, whether they are foreign or domestic, but what we Peruvians need is more work. With a substantial foreign debt, the country as a whole needs the money. It's relying on foreign companies to bring it in. If Mobile does discover oil, the state will reap a percentage of the profits. Whatever the environmental risks, the government seems determined to go ahead. Nosotros somos deficitarios de we have an oil deficit in Peru. We are already buying from abroad. We need to exploit our own resources. We are not self-sufficient oil. We need oil. This does not mean we have to ignore the rights of the indigenous population. Representatives of the indigenous populations made their way downriver to make sure their rights were not ignored. Antonio and other community leaders were going to Puerto Maldonado, the state capital, to attend a forum about Mobile's activities. Mobile showed an educational video, the aim to convince the Indians that the company is serious about the environment. Mobile is more aware than ever of the public relations pressure to avoid an environmental disaster.
it would be very, very damaging. And we don't intend for that to happen. That's why we're very serious about the work that we're doing. There have been other incidents of this around the world, and, and they have not gone unnoted by our company. And we intend for that not to happen in our operations. If oil is found, there will be the potential for an environmental disaster. For the Indians who live here, losing this environment means more than losing a PR battle. It means losing a way of life. There wouldn't be any fish left to eat. Nothing would remain. If oil were here, they will destroy everything. People will come. They will bring all sorts of weapons so the animals will leave from the area. So I pray to God that oil is not found here in the magic of Dios. Manuel is teaching his sons how to use bows and arrows. But whilst these people struggle to hold on to traditions of the past, the isolated tribes deep in the Peruvian jungle face an uncertain future. The inevitable contact with Western civilization could mean not only the loss of their traditions, it could also mean their extinction. <laughs>